I really believe like vulnerability is key to building so many bridges of miscommunication and, and divide in society. But you know, that's just me. You already see it from the title. You know what today's video is. It's just a classic Molly Rambles, sit down, chit chat, and talk about something that has honestly been on my mind for many, many months. And that's why we're gonna talk about dealing with sensory overload. Now, I wanna make it very clear that I am not an expert in sensory overload. I am simply sharing my experience with it, um, what my triggers are, how I cope with it, what it looks and feels like when I experience it. That's it. I'm just sharing my perspective as one disabled woman, as one blind woman. Sensory overload is something that a lot of disabled people with a variety of disabilities experience, though it's important to note that you do not have to be disabled to experience sensory overload. Anybody can experience it. It's just more common for those who are neurodivergent or for those who have a disability that specifically relates to one of their senses such as blindness. So this is something that many blind people deal with. That said, again, not all blind people will deal with it. And if you don't, like if you're blind and you're like, I don't know what she's talking about, I have never dealt with that. Girl, I am jealous, okay? Be blessed. I am so pleased for you because it's genuinely an awful experience that I wish on nobody. And I will say that it is something that I've not always experienced. It's something that I've experienced more and more throughout my life, the older that I get. Um, and also as my disability changes, it, it started for me, I started experiencing it around 13, 14 years old when I began to lose my vision very rapidly. That's when it first began for me. And the less light perception I have, the less sh shadow perception I have, because I have lost a lot in the past few years, the worse it gets for me. Um, so if you do have a progressive disease, maybe this is something you can look forward to. So what is sensory overload? Now, again, I'm not an expert. I'm just sharing kind of what I know of it. And if you are an expert or if you do experience it, like I want this to be a safe space to have conversation. So please comment down below. And I really hope that this video is not only helpful for those who also experience it, but for the loved ones of those who do to maybe enlighten you on how it feels if your loved one has not been able to communicate that with you and maybe to share some coping mechanisms that work for me that you could suggest to one of your loved ones. So that's, it, this video I hope is for everybody. So essentially sensory overload is when one, or multiple of your senses are being overstimulated and it triggers your sympathetic nervous system, which triggers the fight or flight response. And the best way I've ever seen this described, I've kind of tweaked it a little bit. So like my way of describing it based on someone else's way of describing it is that you have too many tabs open on your phone or on your laptop and you're trying to do too many things at once. And all of a sudden that spinning rainbow of death comes up and nothing, everything halts. Nothing can work anymore, nothing is running, the computer freezes, the phone freezes, everything's glitching, blinking, freaking out, and nothing is functioning anymore because there was too much trying to happen at once and now none of it can happen. Now, like I said, this is a topic that's been on my mind for quite a while now that I keep wanting to talk to you guys about, but I will admit for me, it is a bit of a vulnerable topic and I am, I feel like the queen of vulnerability, like I am always down to have those conversations, but even though I'm pretty open and willing to be vulnerable, I do have to be in like the right state of mind for that to open up that way with literally anybody who may or may not be empathetic <laughs> and understanding and open-minded. So um, today I am in that frame of mind and I, you know, I will say that whenever I have seen other disabled people, specifically other blind people, because obviously that is why I experience it, is my blindness at large. Like when I hear other blind people open up and talk about it on like TikTok or something, it helps me feel so validated. Like it helps me so much to just not feel alone in it, to not feel like I am the only one who goes through this. And even if sensory overload looks different for them, their triggers are different, how it presents in them might be different. Just knowing that other blind people deal with it and are openly talking about it makes me feel so much better. And 
that is ultimately why I do want to talk about it because being disabled can feel so isolating. It can feel so lonely. Like when I'm actively in the throes of being um, overwhelmed, I feel very vulnerable and honestly like kind of embarrassed. And that's something I'm trying to work through myself. Like it's my own internalized ableism that I know I'm still trying to unpack and work through. But it's in those moments that not only do I feel very disabled, like I feel more disabled when I'm experiencing that. And I feel more disabled because when I'm in the midst of experiencing this feeling, it is stopping me from enjoying myself. It is stopping me from experiences. It is stopping me from being invested and involved at the level that I want to be. And I know in those moments that if I wasn't blind and I wouldn't be dealing with sensory overload and then I would be able to enjoy this moment or this experience to the fullest, like all these non-disabled people at this restaurant or at this party or at this wedding. And I can't and I have to step away and do my coping strategies, which I will get into later. And in those moments, I feel very disabled. And especially if I need somebody to help me get to a safe space, I feel like I'm impeding on their experience. Uh, I feel like when I'm dealing with this and I'm completely shutting down, because that is what happens. Um, like I said, it's like the computer that just freezes and everything's glitching. That's me as a human. And when, that I'm, when I'm experiencing that, I feel like people are looking at me and seeing how disabled I am. And again, I'm, I'm being very clear that I'm aware that that's like my own internalized ableism. Like unpacking that is a personalized journey. And I know that dealing with sensory overload doesn't make me more disabled. I am as disabled as I am. And I am this disabled in every moment of my life. Whether my symptoms or side effects of my disability are presenting currently or not, I am equally as disabled always. But in those moments, I am aware that my disability means that I am experiencing a different reality to all the non-disabled people that are around me. And so it's it like brings up a lot of those emotions for me and it makes me feel vulnerable and it makes me feel embarrassed that other people in my life who may or not, may or may not see me as very capable might look at me differently and be like, oh, oh, this is weird. Like she's doing something weird. She's doing something very disabled. Like, I don't know, like I fear that that is how people see me. And I know that the people who truly love me don't think that I keep putting off talking about this. And that is also why I've come to a safe space to have this conversation. My bed, my bed, which I will get into in the coping strategies, is one of my safe spaces always in life. It always has been, it always will be. You guys know that, you guys know there is nobody on earth who loves sleeping more than I do and who loves investing in their sleep more than I do, which perfectly brings us to the sponsor of today's video, Brooklinen. And I feel like I can't properly talk about Brooklinen until I get in that bed, the true comfort zone. Oh. I wish every single one of you could crawl into this bed with me right now. It's gonna be hard to get out of this bed. It's so good. I got the Lux Core Bundle. If you want that like luxury hotel fancy sheet feel at a fraction of the cost, these are the ones for you, especially with the core bundle because they're already discounted. The core bundle is basically a set of sheets, pillowcases, a duvet cover, and then the shams for the matching pillows to duvet cover situation. You might notice that I went with a new color. So I always get white sheets. I'm just a white sheet girly. It's who I am. They have plenty of color options and you get to mix and match, which is fun. But I like to have fun with my duvet cover. Now for about a year now, I've had this funky orange, pink, like multicolored duvet cover, which I adore, but it's such a fun way that's inexpensive to like give your room a little makeover, a little facelift, switch things up a bit, is to just simply change the duvet cover and add some new shams and maybe some new throw pillows. And I've been really wanting to decorate for the holidays. Like I want to get Christmas pillows, but Christmas pillows are very patterned. So they didn't really look right on my patterned duvet. So I got the color lemongrass, which goes perfectly with my yellow walls. And then the Christmas pillows I got pop perfectly off of it. Speaking of Christmas, this is a great gift. You have somebody in your life who loves their bed or it's just you, treat yourself, you know? I feel like getting good sheets is just a solid part of adulting. 
you know, upping the sheet game. When they're high quality, like nice material, they keep you cool. You don't get so sweaty and stuff like a, like maybe like a polyester sheet would make you feel. These are nice, breathable, which is my favorite. The Luxe sheets are made of sateen and it's a 480 thread count, making them so buttery soft because they're super tightly woven. The Lux are also a bit warmer than the Percale sheets, making them perfect for all year round comfort if you're not one of those people who wants to change your sheets seasonally, which I, I am not that girl. Okay, I don't have a linen closet to store them in. I want sheets for all year round, so the Lux are perfect for me. And when you get the bundle, whether it's the Lux or the other bundles that they have, I just, I've always gotten the Lux sheets. And I can say, like I've been sleeping with Brooklyn and sheets for pff, at least two years now. So I can say that the quality is there because they last, they last a very long time. Wash after wash after wash, they're going to stay fresh and they're gonna remain the same softness and quality that they are from the day that you get them. Typically you're saving 20% when you get one of their core bundles but you're saving even more right now because they've got a sale on all of the sheets, all of the bundles. So it's an extra 35% off. They are 35% off the bundles. That's a steal. I actually, I not only got myself a fresh set, I got my boyfriend a set for his place. Girlfriend of the year, I think. I mean, I sleep over, so I was like, I just, I really need some nice sheets, okay? I'm, I'm a sleep snob, I admit it. I think it's part of getting older. I'm a sleep snob and I wanted nice sheets at his place, so I just got them for him. And if you don't need a bundle, like you don't want a new duvet and shams, and you just wanna get sheets, all the sheets are currently on sale for 15% off, so it is the perfect time for holiday gift shopping. Okay, so let's, talk about how it feels. I've described this a little bit already, but it can feel like different things at different times. Um, so sometimes it can feel like a really severe panic attack or like really severe anxiety attack, sweating, racing heart, trouble breathing, that kind of thing, those types of symptoms, nausea, which is for me how anxiety attacks present. All of my anxiety lives in my gut. I get, you guys know, like the worst nausea when I'm anxious. Um, it can also just feel like I'm, I'm literally shutting down and I'm completely disconnecting and disengaging from everything that is going on around me, which is how my body is, is, it's fight or flight. My body is trying to remove itself from the environment. I, at times, if it's really bad, I can't open my eyes. Like I cannot open my eyes because if I open my eyes, I will be able to see any light that exists whether that be little twinkly lights, a little flickering flame on the table, and just that is too much. Just that sensory input is too much more for my body to handle. So it's just like, I shut my eyes and it's not even a choice. Like I can't open them. My body is like, no, you are an autopilot now. The brain is taking over. You are shutting down and we are doing what we need to do to preserve you. And so my eyes close, I just wanna like, put my hands like over my ears, like block out sound. Like essentially I'm just trying to block, my body just wants to block out every sensory input it is currently experiencing or as many of them as possible. So like this anxiety, it's like everything around me just becomes noise and I can no longer distinguish what noise I'm, my brain is supposed to be paying attention to. It's like in a normal conversation, say at a dinner table at a busy restaurant, you hear all the murmurings that are background noise and then you hear the people at your table first and foremost. But when I'm having sensory overload, all of that background noise becomes amplified and is equal to the noise of the people I'm sitting with. So it's like I can no longer hear them talking to me or around me, it just all becomes noise and you literally wanna crawl out of your own body. I wanna crawl out of my skin. It is like the most, it, it's worse than an anxiety attack, even if I'm not having, cause I don't always have anxiety attack symptoms. Like sometimes I don't have the racing heart nausea, like sweating, that, those kind of symptoms. I just have that like, oh my God, I wanna crawl out of my own skin. I cannot open my eyes. I cannot hear any of your voices talking to me anymore. My brain is completely shutting down. I am disengaging and I want to be in like a shell, which is so different for me because I am an extrovert 
and I love light. Like light makes my brain so happy. And all of a sudden like that extrovertedness in me that always wants to be chatting with everybody and in the midst of everything, the person who loves looking at that flickering of the flame, like all of that, I want it gone. And I just want to retreat into my own self and like shut myself away from the world because everything, everything is too much. So now I wanna talk about what my personal triggers are. And again, everybody's unique. So just because something triggers me doesn't mean it will trigger everybody. Although I will say a lot of things that do trigger one person with sensory overload will also trigger others. Um, and I also wanna say that just because something is a trigger for me does not mean I will always be triggered by it. Um, so for example, strong smells is a big trigger for me. One being cigarette smoke. If I am feeling overloaded and I smell a lot of cigarette smoke, um, like at uh, when I was in France over the summer, smoking is a lot more common there. And I was really stressed and overwhelmed and with everything else going on. So that cigarette smoke smell when I was out at restaurants on top of the loud environment, cause you're at a restaurant on top of the smells of food was just like, that would be one that would send me over the edge. But that doesn't mean that if I walk past somebody on the street smoking a cigarette, it's gonna trigger me. But for me, typically it's when a lot of them are stacking up together. And typically I'm more easily triggered when I am already tired stressed out and overwhelmed by other things in my life. If I have had a long day, like I've had a really long day, I've been in a lot of new environments, walking around a lot, and every single day in all of these new environments, my brain is working overtime, especially as a blind person. I think it's so important to recognize how exhausting being blind is and being in new environments when you can't see them means every single thing you have to be aware of and thinking about. And that's so draining, right? When I'm traveling, that's a big time um, for me to get sensory overload. Or if I've had a day where I've gone to lots of new places, that's a big time for me to have sensory overload by the end of the day. So then the end of that long day of travel where I've been in a bunch of new environments or at that long day of meetings where I'm going to a bunch of new environments and then I go out to dinner or I go to a party and there is all of these smells of food, perfume, cigarettes. Those are three scents that really are too much for me, especially when you combine them. A perfect example of a very triggering place for me is casinos. Not my place, not my vibe. Oftentimes, not all, not all have smoking, but like a lot of casinos allow smoking. So you'll have like the cigarette smoke, the sound of the shop, um, slot machines and the, the tokens and people chatting and drinks clinking and music playing and um, the flashing lights of all the machines, like whew, way too much for me, girl, get me out. So now I wanna talk about how I personally cope with it um, and please feel free to share things that work for you because you never know if you could really help somebody out who needs it. So like I said, I close my eyes. Um, if I need to, I'll just like plug my ears. At that point, I am so fight or flight. I don't even care how ridiculous people might think I look being a almost 30 year old woman sitting at a restaurant like this. Like, I don't care. I am just truly that sympathetic nervous system has been triggered and she is fight or flighting, okay? I make the people I'm with aware. Like I make sure to tell my boyfriend or to tell my parents so that they know. Um, or a few months ago, I was out at a restaurant with friends of mine and I, I was experiencing it because I had a, had a super long day. The restaurant was dark, loud, noisy, um, had the music, the chatting, it was very busy. There was lots of smells going on. I was just very triggered. And so I, you know, they're trying to have conversation. I was just giving those like one word answers and like looking down, like I knew like they would know something was up. So I was like, I just wanna let you guys know, like I just need a minute, like this is what I'm dealing with right now. It always feels better for me to make sure the people that I'm with understand what's going on and why I might be acting the way I am. And it also allows them to help. Like immediately they were like, you know what? I was thinking this environment was probably super overwhelming for you. Like I can't imagine not being able to see in this environment. Let me go see if we can move to the patio. So that's one thing I do. I always, 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 if possible, sit on a patio. Now I know I'm lucky because I live in Los Angeles where you can sit on a patio all year round and that's not always possible. But whenever it is possible, sitting outside because sound carries different. Usually patios are much smaller 
than the indoor part of restaurants. So there's less people, there's less uh, trapped noise, like the noise can carry easier um, and the smells can dissipate easier. So sitting outdoors always helps me. And the other thing is just move, like leaving the environment if I can. Um, one day in France, it was just really, really bad. So I went from the patio where there was a lot of cigarette smoke um, to like this quiet seating area they had. I guess it was probably for people to like sit and wait for their reservations. And they had like a nice little stuffed toy teddy bear on the couch and I just like whew, sat there in silence, like just peace. And then once I was, had collected myself, like we moved indoors, which actually in this particular environment was quieter because everybody had wanted to be sitting outside. So indoors was much quieter. So that really helps. Going to a safe space, like in public, for me, this is typically a bathroom, which I know sounds gross, but especially if they do have an accessible bathroom, it's a really quiet private space. And if they don't, just a stall, like frankly, it just, unless of course it's a really busy bathroom and there's like blow dryers and stuff going off, that's not helpful. But if you can find like a quiet private bathroom stall, that's a really great place to just go. Close your eyes and breathe, like focus on box breathing, similar to if I'm dealing with an anxiety attack, breathe in for four, hold for four, breathe out for four, hold for four. Just breathing, closing your eyes, removing yourself from all of that stimuli of smell and sound, and just like taking a few minutes to ground yourself can be extremely helpful. Um, if I'm at home, like the, it's coming to my bedroom. So if I'm in public, it's often a bathroom if that's the only thing I can find. But if I'm at home, it's my bedroom. I come to this bed and I just lay down and disengage. Even if I have friends over or there's a party happening and I'll just like quietly slip off close the door and take my moment here alone to just decompress a little bit and recollect myself. Something that also really helps me is like scrolling on TikTok once I'm able to like hear noise, but it's just one sound and it distracts my brain. Like it takes my brain off of thinking about all of these overwhelming feelings I'm currently feeling and allows me to just turn it off disengage and kind of be like a scrolling zombie. And that can really, really help me. I typically can't eat foods with lots of flavors. Again, any more sensory input. If I'm experiencing sensory overload, I can be extremely hungry sitting at a restaurant waiting for my meal and I can now no longer eat because adding one more sensory input for my brain is like too much. And so, eating something very simple like a banana, a plain piece of bread, just a, a food that is very bland, flavorless, so I'm getting food in me, but it's not adding more to my senses to be stimulated by. Um, something else that helps, fidget toys, just distracting your brain and giving your body something to like play with, focus on, other than what's going on in the environment around you. If I don't have fidget toys with me, I typically fidget with my jewelry. You guys know I usually wear lots of rings, necklace, bracelets, stuff like that, so I'll just fidget with my own jewelry. And speaking of jewelry, my boyfriend obviously knows that I struggle with this stuff, so he got me this fidget ring and it's a bumblebee with a sunflower and the sunflower is a fidget spinner. So this is a really subtle way and there's lots of fidget jewelry out there, fidget rings, necklaces, um, there's jewelry, jewelry that you can chew on that's made for adults. Like it doesn't look like kitty jewelry, it's made for adults. You can find it on Amazon, you can find it on Etsy. This was from a small Instagram shop. I will get the name from him and I'll link it down below if you're interested in this one specifically. But there's lots of different jewelry and fidget jewelry um, so whether chewing is more of a sensory stimulation that you enjoy or fidgeting with your fingers is, there's definitely options that are totally age appropriate for adults, but honestly, it's so freaking cute. But in, in those moments, I don't even care if it's age appropriate or not. Like I like poppets. Um, I'll link these below. So my occupational therapist, when I was like very, very young, had me get fidget toys in school. Um, when I would do homework, she had me bouncing on a, a big workout yoga ball. When I was at school, I don't know if any of you had this or had a student in your class with it. I had a blue cushion with bumps on it and it was filled with air so I could like feel the motion under me. And she would have me have fidget toys in my desk drawer. I don't know if anybody had those desks where there's like the wood top and then the metal bottom and it's open. I would have fidget toys in my desk. And these were all recommendations from my occupational therapist 
for me. And there's things that as I grew older, I either just forgot about or was like, I don't need that anymore. No, I do. <laughs> the fidget toys are just as helpful now as they were then. And so um, anyways, when I was getting back into fidget toys a year, a year and a half ago, um, when I was dealing with a lot in my life, 2022, the year from hell, I got this one set on Amazon that was like 30 or $40 for like 50 or 60 fidget toys. I'll link that below, it's a good one. Um, or like these balls that have all these little squishy balls inside of it, like anything like that just really helps to turn your brain off. And the other thing um, that actually my boyfriend also got me is this little thing of earbuds, um, noise canceling, like my bows, I have, where are they? Are they in that bag? I have Bose um, noise canceling earbuds. So they're just, they're not the overhead. They're just the little ones that go in your ears. I think they're in my purse. The, I just grabbed these out of my purse because I always have them with me. These are the Bose ones I use. Um, so these actually play music and stuff like that, like they're regular earbuds, but the noise cancellation on these, even if you're not playing anything, is really, really good. I'll link all of any of the products I'm mentioning below, but. These are the, the Quiet Comfort Ultra Earbuds, the Bose Quiet Comfort Ultra Earbuds. I don't know if anybody else struggles with this. I have tiny ears, tiny, okay, like kid-sized ears, um, and these actually fit and do not fall out. It, oh, the noise cancellation is turning on, so I like can't even hear myself talk anymore. But these, I put the smallest tip on, and that they fit my ears like, look. They are not coming out. They're so good. These I would recommend, they just, like I said, even if you're not playing anything, they completely dampen the noise around you. And again, people wear earbuds in public all the time. Like no nothing looks weird about that. So these I always have in my purse. I always have a fidget toy in my purse and I always have these in my purse. I cannot remember the name of the brand. There's two different brands that make them. They're not expensive. I wanna say between 25 and $40. They're these tiny, very discreet, clear silicone earbuds. Um, they're like, they're a whole straight through. Um, actually, speaking of me having child size ears, these are the smallest size they sell, which are for children. Like this, they have them for every size ear, but these ones are the ones for the, the ears of a, of a child. So basically, when you're in like a loud environment, like say a restaurant where there's lots of noise happening, you stick those in, again, very discreet. Nobody can even really tell they're in, especially if your hair was down, and they block out certain frequencies. So like I said, when I'm being very overwhelmed, all that background noise begins to sound as loud as the forefront noise. This helps mute that again. These Whereas the bows, like I wouldn't be able to really hear the people I'm chatting with anymore if I had these in. With these, I can still hear the people I'm chatting with and it brings the noise at the table back to the forefront and helps dampen some of those other frequencies in the background. And the final thing is loose clothing, stretchy fabrics, soft fabrics, comfortable clothes. Like what I'm wearing right now, that's the, the hotshot onesie guys. It's a godsend, but truly like anything loose, flowy, stretchy, comfy, you guys know comfort is always my top priority. Like I've literally made videos about how to dress cute while also being comfortable and not wearing sweats or athleisure. Um, but there is a way to curate your entire wardrobe to be comfortable. I do not buy or own clothes that are uncomfortable, that don't have stretch, that are too tight, that are rigid, um, that are too, th the fabric's too thick or stiff, uh, high necks. I love a turtleneck and I like a high neck, but if I'm going to be in a situation where I know that I might be triggered, no, 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 because any of that feeling of tightness, clinginess up around my neck or throat, <laughs> no, makes things so much worse. And that is everything for today's video. I hope at least one of you out there found this to be insightful or helpful in some way. Um, and if you do, that means this was worth it. And thank you again to Brooklinen for sponsoring this video. Get yourself some good sheets. Like I said, I love wearing soft, comfy fabrics when I'm dealing with sensory overload and there's nothing better than crawling into a soft, comfy bed when you're dealing with it too. So get that while you can, while the good deal is going on. And until next time, you can click over here to watch this video I recently posted with all the new things I bought. 
wellness things, beauty things, a great book recommendation, and more. So check that video out or click over here to watch this video about using mobility aids that do help you when you need it, okay? Check out that video. Love you guys. Bye.